so this is nearby Sierra Pines camp. Went for a hike with two wonderful mates. There's a little wish, or I call her Dimka, which means in uh, translation to English from Russian, um, smoke, because she has the color of smoke from chimney. And the other guy is Taiga, well-known star of YouTube. Wonderful dog. Has a little bit issues with behavior, but with God's strength, we will uh, try to work on his behavior. By working on his behavior, working on my own behavior as well. Learning a lot of things from these things, these creatures. Just joy to go with them for a hike. Let's go. Take a push up, push up. They speak only Russian. Uh, probably a little bit of English comprehension, but mostly no. Uh, quote unquote, no. That's what they understand. So, friends, if you guys will come, decide to come to Sierra Pines Camp, which is located in Twin Bridges, California. Twin Bridges is between. Um, Placerville and Lake Tahoe, but I think this is a Placerville County. Wonderful place. Uh, always there's a snow. This is just beginning a season. It's good that snow is taking very slow, not too fast dumping uh, at the right rate for me because I gotta build a lot of things here uh, before snow. Meanwhile, enjoying this nature. <laughs> Silly dog just slipped. Enjoying God's creation. Just these little puppies. Also God's creation. God is good. In whatever he's doing. Uh, I want to know Jesus more. In everything that... I do. It says in uh, Proverbs chapter f chapter three, Proverbs verses uh, five. That do not lean on your own understanding, but trust in God with all with all thine heart. In all your ways acknowledge the Lord, for He will deliver, and He will deliver your uh, deliver or direct your paths. Proverbs three, five, six, and then seven is also. Very a good verse. The Bible is a very good book. Whatever you quote from it, mostly it's uh, a direct on point, like a nail. Or it says God's word is like a like a uh, sword, two-edged sword. It can uh, pierce your heart. It pierces all the way to the core being of a human. Where is dividing is dividing the spirit, uh, spirit, soul, and mind. That's how far it pierces God's word into the person's being. It's two edged swords, very sharp. And whoever's handling that sword, and also says that God's, yeah, basically, the Bible is our sword. A lot of people say that. Yeah, but yes and no. God's word is spirit, is is a two-edged sword. So whoever's handling that word, whoever owns that word, or God tr entrusts his word, he is the one who can handle it well. And he shouldn't forget that 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 word, very word that he'll be handling or swinging. It has two edges, one edge towards him and the other edge towards the opponent who he tries to slay with, uh, slay with that sword. So first of all, he will hurt himself, definitely, in a good sense. God's word first comes to the uh, receiver who receives it and slays him, slays him all the way to the heart, mind and soul, dividing the substance in the person. Putting everything in order, aligns him, aligns him with his emotions, brings in happy medium with emotions, 
So he, he's not leaning on emotions, leans on faith, aligns all his thoughts together. All that is like an operation of a doctor, which hurts him. And uh, I think that God, when he operates, most of the time he lets us feel the pain, the process to understand. And then he explains us what we went through. Maybe not all the time, but mostly I think those who have the gifts of a teacher, they should understand at least what God is doing in their lives. And then they can teach others the process, what to look for, what to wait for. So coming back to that word, that is two-edged sword. Yeah, that word definitely has to pierce the receiver first. And then only he will be able to gently operate the other people's lives with that word. Not to slay them so they would never be alive, but slay them in, in the way that it will prick their hearts, like Peter's chapter verse, chapter Acts. Chapter 2, Acts, Book of Acts, Chapter 2. It said over there that when Peter was preaching, they were pricked in their hearts. And they said, Brother, well, man and brother, what shall we do? And then Peter said, Repent and believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus. I think, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what real evangelists should, be, should achieve in his teachings and... Uh, And his conduct with the sword. I believe, well, I know I'm guilty at using the sword in such a way to slay the opponent in such a degree that he would hate the messenger, not the message. And then obviously rejecting the messenger, he's rejecting the message. That's all from pride, arrogance. And uh, probably running away from from the operation table where God has put me. And I believe that, I don't think God uses anesthesia or something to uh, dumb the pain down. Jesus had to feel the whole pain without any wine, vinegar. He went through the whole pain. And same thing, a lot of people when they come into the uh, operation room of Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, God the Father. They start feeling just a knife goes through the flesh, delivering from the first abscess or first wound. And that's where they break down and they just run away bleeding. And God's like, okay, come back when you're ready. It's not going to be otherwise. It's not going to be, I'm not going to give you some magical pill, four steps for holiness. And then that person realized that what he went through and that he was in God's hands and he saw a little bit of God's work. And then he thinks he has all together and he goes into preach about it, trying to slay other people. It will not work. First, you got to be cleansed from your sin. You got to be cleansed from uh, all unrighteousness that is within you. And only then you'll understand when you will suffer pain, consequences, death, and resurrection in Jesus Christ, filling with the Holy Spirit. Only then you'll be gentle, loving, and I will be the same way. As I'm, I'm preaching this to myself. I will know how to slay my brothers and sisters in such a way, gently taking my time, only going as far as the Holy Spirit is leading me, never uh, walking in front of Him, beside Him, but Him walking in me. And I'm therefore, I'll be able to say, like Paul said, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live, I live for Him. And He lives through me. Perfect obedience. Oh God, I, I wish that I would achieve that in my brothers and sisters. Maybe who will listen to this, never thought of this way, the way I put it in this place. Maybe Holy Spirit will reveal this to you, to seek for this perfection, holiness, and to be slain by the word, which is piercing all the way to the core of the man, man's being, judges the intentions motivations the desires of heart doesn't skips over the actions because actions sometimes deceiving but god sees the motivations 
he comes and he shows Nikolai what's up with your motivation. From outlook appearance, you look very good, very nice Pharisee, but what is your motivation? What is your intention? The desire of your heart. That's where that word pierces. It's painful. But there's no other way. No other way to holiness. I'm gonna, I have to call out this dog. Taiga! Taiga! Rhythm! Come here, buddy. Taiga! Come here! Hey! Wonderful one. So yeah, enjoying this hike. Well, I was just uh, starting my hike. I was reminded of a sister in Christ. And uh, just been observing of her actions and uh, the way she conducts herself in social media, in just uh, in personal conversations. I was kind of about to like, I don't know, judge her or something before, because, well, so she would have sometimes things like, you know, I just want to be uh, serving Jesus alone and pleasing him, him alone. Uh, audience of one, which is Jesus, only one audience in my life. And at the same time, I would be like observing things like, you know, she would be posting uh, good posts, Christian posts on Facebook, maybe on Instagram, on in personal conversations, and she would be sharing all the things that God is doing in her life and what she's going through and how God is working with her behavior, just fixing her, sanctifying her. And I was I was reminded of this, and I'm like, man, what a hypocrite! In the sense that, well, if it's audience, uh, uh, just Jesus is the first only person that you're trying to please, then why would you be posting things like that? Uh, to share with the world and everything. And now I'm caught in this same loop, uh, making this video out of just, I don't know what, that's not what I wanted to share. I want to share with the, about these little two dogs. And then remind of her and I gotta repent. I have no clue how God is leading that uh, woman of God. And whatever she's sharing, I have, she's not my servant to judge her. Paul says, don't judge other other servants. If, if she's not your servant, you have no right to judge her. Therefore, I repent. Because I'm doing the same thing while I'm judging the other person. And that's what I think Romans 2 is talking about, is that uh, how do you judge other person by doing the same thing? Hypocrite. Chapter 2, Romans is talking about this. Yeah, my small preaching or teaching, it was not intentional at all. It was these little two dogs, this little puppy, Wish slash Dinka, in translation, smoke. I think we found some bare uh, footprints. They're pretty big. And I want to share about Taiga. The star of YouTube. Just kidding. God bless you all. Whoever enjoyed this video, thumbs up, subscribe. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.